In this video, we're gonna talk about four of the worst plumbing products that I've ever seen, but then I'm gonna tell you why one of them might be the thing that can save you money. Kinda of crazy, but it's the truth. So let's talk first about a P-trap. A P-trap, as you know, is what you have under your sink. It's on your lavatory, it's on your kitchen sink, they're built into your toilet. Not like this, they're built out of porcelain, but it's part of the toilet. But here's what's wrong. This is what they do look like. This is the right way. This is the wrong way because this perforation here, all that does is make it where things can clog up. Trust me, I understand that maybe the plumber didn't put things in right. I understand maybe he put it in the wrong spot. I understand that maybe the handyman thinks this is okay. You would not believe what they believe. Here's what happens. These perforations, they catch food, they catch eggshells, they catch anything at all that you may put down your garbage disposal that will come down in here. And this is gonna lead to a stopped up sink. Now the problem is if you don't realize it. Say you turn on the water, you're waiting for it to get warm, and you run to the restroom real quick, and you forget it's running. This has got your kitchen sink clogged, and here's what happens. Now it overflows. Here's what's wrong with these. All these little ridges, all these little bends, everything that they do in here, this is gonna make it get clogged up. The right way, let's put a real P-trap on it. Now this is the J-Ben and an inch and a half trap arm. But this is what's right. That way you have a good smooth flow. Now if you say, well mine doesn't line up, you might be able to loosen the nut on this end, slide it out and turn it to get it to where you need it. These things really are slightly adjustable. And they also make 45s that you can either take off your trap adapter, turn your pipe to get it where you need, or I've even seen the old threaded 45s, meaning it's a slip joint on the ends. So there's things that you can do, but whatever you do, don't do this. This is gonna cause you problems later and you're gonna regret it. Next, we're gonna talk about a saddle valve. And what a saddle valve is, it's a piece that actually lets you put a clamp on a piece of pipe and install a valve right there. And you would think that that's a great deal. Well, you shouldn't. The way these go together, you've actually just got a clamp with some bolts, which is no problem. Put them together, you clamp them on the pipe. It's a great thing, right? You even have a rubber gasket here that you put on the inside right there so that when you make a hole in the pipe, it doesn't leak around it. And then what you do, is you take the actual saddle valve and there's a needle right here. If you turn this, see how that needle comes out? That thing's pretty sharp, but it needs to be. When you put it together, you get it where it goes. Then you put the rubber gasket up inside of it so that when it does go on the pipe, it literally seals off and holds. Now that's good because when you screw this all the way in, what's gonna happen, that needle's gonna come up inside right there and it's gonna make a hole. Then when you are ready to turn the water onto it, you pull this back out and now it opens the water flow where it flows through here, which is good. They used to make this to run to an ice breaker or something. Now the problem is, if this valve ever fails, if you ever wanna take it off, if you ever wanna do anything like that, you've still got a hole in the water line that you attached it to. There's no way to fix this. These are not good things to install. What I recommend is contacting a plumber, have him come in, sweat in a T, or learn to solder. Put in a T, put in an extra valve. That's the right way to do it. And an angle stop with a rubber washer in it, you're never gonna have a problem. If it does, you shut it down, change out the washer, take care of it that way. These old saddle valves, not a good thing to have. Just saying. Now this is another one. This is one of the worst things for your system. Chemical drain cleaners, and I know they say, look, guaranteed, dual foamer, and I have so many people get mad at me and say, Roger, you just don't like it because it takes money out of your pocket. My thought is, look, I teach people how to repair toilets, how to change out dishwashers, how to change out garbage disposals, how to unclog them, how to unjam them, how to unclog a toilet. I teach people how to fix a whole lot of things. Do you really think the one thing that I want them to call me for is to unstop a stopped up toilet or something? Probably not. So here's the deal. This stuff is bad. It's bad for you. It's bad to have these chemicals in your house. If you pour this in a drain, you actually need to tell a plumber whenever he really comes to unstop it, I've got chemicals in here because they're bad for you. They get in your eyes, they can make somebody go blind. This stuff is not anything 
you really want in your house, more or less in your plumbing system. I know it's not an acidic, it's a base, but here's what's wrong. I have gone into houses that have the entire bottom of the cast iron pipe rotted out, and I say, oh, we don't have any problems. We've been pouring rain cleaner in here for years. Let me tell you, there's problems. I'm gonna tell you this though, it's probably not near as bad on the PVC system because of the plastic, but I'm telling you, invest in tools. If your drain clogs up that much, get a little sewer machine. If it's a sink, get a little sink auger. Get something other than this. The last thing you wanna do is have this sitting in the sink and some kids come play in it and go blind or something, that would not be good. This is not anything you want in your house, more or less, plumbing system. This has so many warnings, you need a full hazmat suit, a respirator, a life protection system, and a doctor on staff just to be able to use this. Maybe it's not that bad, but it's pretty bad. Read the warnings. Keep your kids away. Keep your wife awake. Hide your kids, hide your wife. Matter of fact, get out of the house. Take this with you and throw it away. Oh well. Now the big dog. I don't know if y'all know what these are or not. Have you ever heard of shark bite fittings? Here's where I piss a lot of plumbers off because plumbers say, oh God, they're great. Okay, if you don't know how to plumb, they are. Oh! Look, I don't mean that bad. But if you're a plumber and you're using these, there's a problem. This is not a professional job. Now, if you're a homeowner and you're just trying to do something temporarily, this is great. But remember, this is not what most plumbers call a permanent installation. Now look, I've talked to people from SharkBite. They say, Roger, look, if it's used, perfectly right, there are no problems. And I agree with that. But most people don't do it perfectly right. As a plumber and a plumbing company owner, we go back and fix more leaks on these, God, than any other type of fittings that we work on. Anytime we find water leaks, most of the time this is what they are, unless it's a slab leak and it's been there 30, 40, 80 years, whatever it is. Anytime you can just push something together and say, it's gonna work forever, I'm gonna disagree a little bit, and I know there's people out there gonna say, well, they use them on your cars, they use them on the spaceship. Okay, I don't know if they're the Shark Bite brand, they may be, but I still would want a compression fitting, a solder fitting, a PEX fitting, an Upanor fitting, anything at all other than this. Anything that you tell me just pushes together can pull apart, and it can. And I know, because they make a fitting to help you do it. So anyway, now I've told you what my four bad things are, including the Shark Bite. Now, I'm gonna tell you which one can save you a lot of money. Oh wait, that's a shark bite, isn't it? I don't have anything against shark bite for the right installation, for the right purpose. And here's my deal. I've run some of the biggest jobs in Dallas. One of them happened to be work out at DFW Airport. The cool thing is we had to have these in a water control box because if this pipe starts running because somebody turned on a wrong valve or we can't get the water to shut off because there's an old valve but we've already cut it, and we don't want to flood the airport, literally, you take it, you push it on, it stops. Would I leave that on there permanently? God, no. Do other plumbers leave it on there permanently? If so, find a new plumber, okay? Look, I don't mean that bad, but if you've got a plumber selling you a shark bite job and he's telling you this works as good as anything else, call his bluff, get rid of him, get somebody else out there. Matter of fact, before they do the job, ask them, what kind of fittings, what kind of pipe are you going to use? Because if they're using shark bite and selling that to you as a professional job, they're either a handyman, a hack, or they just literally don't know what they're doing. If you've had any products that you've used that have failed on you, please do me a favor, leave a comment down below and let me know what they were and what kind of problem you had with it. And if you've used any of these and they've worked great for you, do me a favor and let me know that too. Look, I don't mind seeing that it can work right sometimes. I just know most of the time, these are fittings you don't want to use. I'm Roger Wakefield, Lead AP, the expert plumber. I'll see you in the next video if you don't get flushed.